Hello, hello. Welcome to a new Roblox AJAT slash Mia slash Refold progress video. Um, I guess I should just call this Refold because that's the newest one, but I'm also kind of not really strictly following Refold, so uh, I guess I'll keep putting all of those in the title for now. But anyway, this is the 12 month progress video. Last one was the six month progress video, the first one. Uh, so yeah, now it's been a year and uh six months kind of feels like a long time and also not a long time it's a very weird thing but um yeah anyway before i get into the actual uh progress video i wanted to comment a little bit about the last video uh, in particular the response i really did not expect the response that i got on that video mainly because i was expecting pretty much no one to watch the video i just uploaded it uh, thinking I could look back on it myself uh, when I got better at AJAT or Japanese in general and I was gonna show it to like a friend or two who was also doing the method but I got a bunch of um, people who I guess found the video somehow I don't know like recommendations maybe um, and they left some very nice comments so thank you for that uh, a couple people also reached out to me uh, individually like uh, in messages uh, asking for like specific advice on how to get started and like what was uh, what was the way I did certain things which is always nice to share experiences and help out where I can obviously for most of the stuff you should you know rely on the refold guide and the videos on like Matt's channel but there's like there's definitely stuff that um, is not covered so it's uh, always nice to have a friend or two you can compare experiences with but yeah, that was that, and uh, I think I'll get into the actual video now. So the last six months um, of this method. For fun, I decided to uh, calculate the number of hours I've spent on learning Japanese so far, as in like learning age at from the time I started a year ago. And assuming an hour average of five hours per day, which I think is pretty reasonable, if not a bit low for me, because I was doing like in the beginning, in like the first three months, I was doing pretty high days. I was doing like 13, 14 hours a day because I was just completely free. Uh, then I started work in August, and then after that, uh, my hours fell a lot. You know, like I had to work eight hours a day, but I was still able, able to get a lot of downtime in because I work from home and wasn't always having something to do. So, yeah, hours do add up a lot more easily that way. Yeah, anyway, 5 hours a day as a low estimate, uh, 365 times 5, that's 1825, and for 6 hours a day, that's um, 2,190 hours, so if we average that out, that's uh, in the ballpark of 2,000 hours, and that's definitely a decent chunk of time, um, like, I've spent more than that on RuneScape, so that's kind of sad, but uh, it is good that it is nice to see that I have uh, 2,000 hours in this method so far. Um, definitely plan to keep increasing that. And it's going to be interesting when I get closer and closer to like the 10k hour figure because I hear that number thrown around a lot for like mastery of a skill. Like if you want to get really good at a skill, you need kind of like 10k hours. Obviously, it depends on what you're doing and yourself and how quickly you learn. But I feel like for language learning, 10k hours of you know, good immersion learning, like, especially with something like AJAT, that's uh, definitely going to make you very good at the method. Um, yeah, so that's that. And also, I think one of the main things I talked about in the last video about what I was going to do next was the monolingual transition. And that was because in my head, uh, it was going to be like this big thing that would probably take like a month or maybe two to, you know, get into and it's going to be a big transformation. But uh, surprisingly, it ended up being a lot easier than I expected. Uh, I think that was because I had a fair amount of reading experience already. And so uh, there's like a type of language that is used more often for like technical descriptions or formal descriptions of stuff and like that sort of language. Like the dictionary has its own kind of language, but if you have a decent amount of reading experience, it's actually not that hard to get into it, I found. And so yeah, it took me about a week or two before I was uh, feeling completely used to just looking up stuff in Japanese. 
monolingually. And now that's just by default what I do. A big help for that is uh, the Mia Dictionary, or I guess it's called Migaku Dictionary now because they, uh, I forget when it was, I think it was in like December that Matt and, um, oh man, I don't remember his name. That's not being mean, I just, I just forgot his name, but there's a guy who worked with Matt and he did like a bunch of technical stuff like uh, make this add-on. Uh, but yeah, it got rebranded to Mikaku, but when I got it, it was Mia Dictionary. And this thing is super cool. Uh, you can load it up with a bunch of dictionaries. So here at the top, I have monolingual dictionaries. Then I have Forvo. Then I have Google Images. So this is the word for uh, geyser. Uh, down here, I have the English one. And this is pretty much all I need now when I immerse. I just have this open all the time. And if I'm reading something or I hear something, uh, like if I'm watching a show without subtitles, then I just search it up and copy paste the sentence and I can make a card in just like a second or two and it's super powerful. Uh, because of that I've actually built up a huge um, buffer of uh, cards so I don't really need to worry about running out of cards whereas before when I was just keeping them on like a notepad and picking through them at the end of the day um, I definitely did run into days where I was like oh man I gotta find more sentences but now I just have so many that uh, like I don't think I'm going to run out anytime soon, especially because uh, I have more sentences like saved on Kindle. I've also been using like a site that Matt showed in his one of his videos where you can highlight stuff on your Kindle, import it into like a website and you get a bunch of those clippings and it keeps track of which ones you deleted and you can just copy paste those into here and make sentence cards out of those. So I've done that a little bit. I've also just been taking a lot of like screenshots on my phone whenever I read manga on my phone. And yeah, there's that to look through if I ever need those. So yeah, sentence cards are uh, in no short supply. But yeah, speaking of Anki, I guess I can go ahead and show it. Um, one big change also is that I installed Morphman at some point. I don't remember exactly when I did that, but I think it was a couple months ago to say the least. Uh, I did put in a little bit of effort to get Morphman up to speed on with what I actually know. So like I did the initial scan, but when I was doing like um, these subs to SRS decks, uh, it was showing a lot of words that it thought I didn't know and I had to go through and mark like a lot of cards that as a lot of cards as being already known. So that took a while. And to be honest, there's probably still a lot of um, words that I need to input into Morphman, but I'm just doing it uh, bit by bit, especially because I don't use Morphman that much for cards now since I have a big backlog. But um, yeah, the important uh, figure here is the K here, which I think stands for like known morphemes or something. So this is like the number of words roughly, like in the number on the right is the uh, number of words, including all the different variations. So like if something is written in like kana and kanji, I know both variations, so that counts as two. Uh, that's what that means. But the more important one is the K. And so that's 8.5k, meaning I know at least roughly 8.5k words. And I would say I actually know a little bit more, so maybe like 9k or maybe even closer to 10k. And I think it's interesting to see that uh, because getting a grasp of how big your vocab is uh, is a little bit of a good marker for progress. So I think 10k vocab is a pretty solid uh, intermediate vocab. You can read a lot of stuff watch a lot of stuff with 10k vocab, assuming like, of course, you. most of the words are uh, starting at the top of the frequency list and not just obscure words. And I, th I definitely feel that. I feel like now whenever I read something new or I watch something new, I understand almost all of it. Sometimes I won't understand certain things because the word that I don't know is like a very niche or specific word or just yeah just something i don't know that's not actually that common but most of the common words now that i know uh have definitely helped me understand most things that i immerse in and also i can show the uh number of cards i have so this is uh 3921 cards so almost 4k cards um i'm not sure when i'll hit 4k probably in like a week or two considering how many cards I add per day, but 
yeah, getting to be a pretty big deck. Um, of course, I do reviews only 10 new cards a day, so my reviews don't actually balloon up like crazy. Um, the reason I decided to keep 10 cards a day is because I really don't want to spend that much time on Anki. Like, I, I, I recognize its helpfulness, and I do utilize it, but I don't want to do, like, half an hour, 45 minutes of Anki reviews per day. Uh, so this is a good balance for me. Um, but yeah, this is just what the cards look like. This is the word I was showing uh, just now, the geyser word. Yeah, um, not too much to say about this other than I'll keep working on Anki. But yeah, let me take a look at my notes because I have a lot of stuff written down for this. Oh yeah, so the stuff I've been immersing in is pretty much the same as um, what I've been immersing in the first six months, except I've been doing a lot more reading, mostly through manga and visual novels, but also a bunch more reading through light novels. I think when I was, um, when I had uploaded the last video, I had finished or almost finished one uh, volume of a light novel, but now I've uh, finished the first one, the second one, and I'm halfway through the third one, so it feels pretty good to um, have actually read like a few books now. Uh, and it doesn't feel as hard as uh, it was when I started for sure, so that's definitely a good sign of progress. I honestly should be uh, further ahead, like I could be on volume 4 now, but uh, I have like like phases of stuff that I'm into, so right now I'm really into like visual novels and manga, but at some point I'll be like really into anime or shows or something, and then at another point I'll be reading a lot of uh, this like novels. But um, yeah, we'll keep continuing. <laughs> we'll keep on doing that, I think. Um, also, besides anime and uh, just like TV shows on Netflix, I've been watching a fair amount of Japanese YouTube. Uh, in the start, in the first six months, I was kind of not really into Japanese YouTube that much because all I did was I like used a brand new YouTube account. I switched to Japanese, and you get like the front page of you know YouTube, not knowing what you want to watch and you just get a bunch of various stuff and the stuff I was watching wasn't really that interesting to me so I wouldn't really keep coming back to it but re lately I found like a nice um, niche of things that I actually like and I think are decent for immersion uh, and that is uh, mostly Japanese comedy skits so I think uh, these are called Konto and they're actually uh, kind of a favorite of mine they basically have like, uh, it's sort of like Manzai, but instead of like two people just standing there and talking back and forth, they also have like a situation built in, so they'll maybe use some props and stuff, but it's not really slapstick, so it's kind of uh, like a median. I'm not really an expert on comedy, but I do uh, like a lot of the skits that I see, so I find it a really nice way to uh, get some pure audio listening, especially because compared to like anime and um, TV shows, the dialogue there is a lot uh, rougher, more casual, and a bit more realistic, I feel like. Because uh, especially a lot of the ones are acting out everyday life situations and trying to be realistic with a little bit of weirdness thrown in. And so you get a nice idea of what is normal and what is not normal in terms of language, which is also another nice aspect of that. And, uh, you know, the audio quality is different and they don't always enunciate everything like in anime that they would so you get a lot of different exposure to that um yeah so i guess moving on to more impressions stuff i feel like in the first six months there was like especially like after like two or three months i was watching shows and i was getting like really happy with the fact that i could follow along the plot with most of the time with the level of japanese that i got uh, obviously I wasn't really good at details and there's a lot of sentences I didn't understand at all, but the fact that I could watch it and enjoy it and keep up with the plot somewhat was uh, very rewarding, but then like I grew out of that. And so in this specific six months in the beginning, I was re-watching some of the shows that I'd seen before and I was feeling like my Japanese had gotten a lot worse because I suddenly saw all these words that I didn't actually know and uh, I was thinking harder about the specific words, the sentences, and trying to understand the meaning more precisely, and uh, I was at a better level 
of Japanese to be able to do that. And that's like a, a phenomenon I actually read about on the Refold site. So they said that you'll experience this uh, this feeling like your comprehension has suddenly gotten a lot worse, but actually it's just an illusion. You've actually just gotten better and now you're noticing all the things that you didn't notice before. And um, that's definitely true. That's 100% accurate. And now that I've gotten to the end of um, 12 months, I feel like I've gotten rid of that phenomenon. Now I feel like I'm just back to normal, enjoying the content and being happy with my level of comprehension, which is actually pretty good. I won't say it's hard to be really um, boastful, prideful of your level, especially like where I'm at right now, because it just feels like there's a whole world that of stuff that you don't understand still. And there's, you can pretty much pick up anything and there's still like a bunch of stuff that you can point to and say, yeah, I don't really understand this part, but I am able to read and get through complete things like books and manga and TV shows and stuff like that. So it is a definite sign of progress, but it's hard to feel happy about that. It, it always feels like you get used to whatever level you end up getting to. And then all you can think about is like, oh, well, I don't understand this part. And so you keep working. So I think it's kind of a good thing. Uh, you just have to not get down too much about it. Um, all part of it. Um, listening wise, I've been doing a lot more pure listening because I just want to improve my listening ability. Uh, when I watch shows now, I pretty much never use subtitles. I have them turned off, and I have if I have them at all. And if I have them, then I uh, turn them back on. If I miss, if I feel like I didn't hear something correctly, or I'm curious about something, or I wanted to see like uh, what exactly did they say, I feel like that's helping a little bit. But mostly, I just when I watch shows, I kind of uh, sit back and relax a bit more than when I'm just reading stuff. Reading is where I'm more actively looking at stuff up. And listening ability is definitely a completely different beast, I feel like, compared to reading. Reading, you can just sit and take your time, you're not in a rush, and uh, it's very easy to look stuff up. But for listening, you just kind of have to know and be able to pick it out. And if your brain isn't uh, at that level, then you're probably going to miss a lot. There's not much you can do about it other than keep listening and uh, slowly build up that skill. Uh, obviously, listening is really important for when you get to output, and I'm going to talk about output later uh, in this video, but the main thing is that uh, I want to just keep steadily building up a good listening level by the time I get there, so I won't have to worry about it too much. I'm still uh, doing reading as my main thing, because I feel like that's going to increase my actual ability of the language faster. Again, this is just stuff that I, um, I've concluded by watching Matt's videos where he pretty much says that. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna follow through on that. <sighs> yeah, okay, so this is the thing I was talking about before where I'm not really super confident about my level because even after a year of learning, it feels like I can encounter new words almost all the time. Like, unless it's something super, super simple, like a really simple um, slice of life show where they don't touch into any specific topics, then I pretty much find stuff still every other page that I could look up. Now, it's changed from being stuff to where if I didn't look it up, then I wouldn't really understand what's going on, to stuff where, like, I kind of understand what this is, but I don't really know the word, actually. Like, it's my first time seeing the word, but I, I kind of understand what it means, stuff like that. Basically, stuff that's more detail-oriented rather than being part of the uh, main plot, I guess. Not really sure how to word that, but hopefully you guys understand. And um, I think that's just because when you learn a language, uh, you start off by learning the most common words first. That's the ones that you see the most, hear the most. So you just acquire them and they become part of your vocabulary. And then those words alone aren't really that useful because they're just like, like the English words the, with, um, is, I, you know, they're not really uh, very meaningful. They're more kind of like glue for all the other words that actually have meaning for like the specific context. 
So that's that's another phenomenon that uh, exists where you understand 90% of the words in the sentence because they're all super common words, but then there's that like last 10% of the sentence that is just a pretty uncommon word, but it has the most meaning of the sentence. So like, like imagine like you were going to a, a doctor's appointment and the doctor was telling you, okay, it looks like that you have blank, and then blank was the word that you didn't understand because it's some weird like medical condition. That's a pretty important part of the sentence, but it's probably not in like your top 10k vocabulary. So that is the importance of being, uh, as the importance of having a good vocabulary in size. But yeah, basically, I've learned a decent chunk of words. So I've gone from learning the most basic words to a bit higher than that and a bit more than that. And pretty much where I turn into new words is like, literary expressions, especially because I read a lot of um, novels and like uh, manga and even visual novels have a lot of that stuff. Um, so like literary expressions, old stuff, uh, stuff like that happens, but also just more, um, there's like, in when you're reading like literature, the author tries to not repeat the same thing in the exact same way all the time. Like the sentence, uh, he or she smiled is probably going to occur a lot in some texts and they don't want to use the exact same word every time so I've at this point I've like seen it expressed like 10 different ways and they kind of cycle through that and so there's a lot of that stuff uh, when you read and as you read more and more you encounter more and more of those less used less commonly used expressions and uh, I'm, I'm really rambling here but my point is that I'm kind of as I'm kind of getting into the outer reaches of these uh, vocabulary, they start becoming more and more niche. So one word I might use in like one extremely, I might only ever see in one really specific situation. Um, and it might not be that useful, but it might be the thing that I need to understand the, what's going on in that piece of dialogue. And so this isn't really a problem. This is just something that I, I'm pretty sure it will iron itself out as I keep going and I keep learning more and more words and I keep expanding my vocabulary and learning all these domains and stuff. And speaking of domains, domains is a pretty important uh, concept from Refool that I took. Uh, I think I talked about domains in my last video. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I don't remember. But um, the main thing is like, there's the slice of life domain, which is the common everyday life language that people use. And then there's more specific stuff like, uh, for example, if you're watching like a cop drama, there will be a lot of words that are thrown around like to like legal processing, arrests, uh, police jargon, things like that. And if you're watching stuff like, um, I guess like something with science fiction, there's going to be a lot more uh, words that pop up that aren't really common in everyday life. And same for like fantasy, all different kinds of fantasy. So uh, the idea is that you master one at a time, starting with like slice of life because it's the most common and has a lot of overlap with others. And then you learn like little specific ones one at a time. So that's the main idea. And I'm kind of following that, except I'm not being very strict with it, to be honest, because while I do like slice of life a lot, I do also enjoy watching other stuff than that. And sometimes if I'm really bored with slice of life or whatever I'm watching in slice of life at the time, then I'm just going to go ahead and watch something that I'm more interested in. Like, for example, uh, one of the shows that I watched a lot of recently was Naruto. Uh, Naruto is pretty long, and I watched Naruto, the first, like, show, just Naruto, and then also watched Shippuden. And although I skipped all the filler episodes, uh, it still added up to being, like, 500 episodes. And while there is definitely a lot of slice-of-life-ish dialogue in Naruto, there's definitely also a lot of almost, like, Naruto-specific words that they kind of create in there. There's also a little bit of like military language too, because the stuff they do in there is uh, sort of based on that. Um, but even so, I don't, I didn't think it was that hard to understand a lot of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just one example of something that I would watch that wouldn't be strictly size of life, but is also not kind of really outlandish. I think I'm gonna keep immersing along like alongside that uh, line of thinking. 
anyway, getting back on track here. Uh, overall, how do I feel about my progress so far? So I guess ra wrapping this up. Um, overall, I think I have progressed a decent amount of time, or a decent amount for the time I've just put in. Um, I know I got a lot of comments on the last video saying that my progress was pretty uh, insane for six months, but I think I think I kind of agree with that. I think that starting off having already done like RTK and starting off with age ADA right off the bat really helped. Um, if I've been doing more traditional methods or I've been just doing less hours, honestly, because I was putting in pretty strong hours for the first couple of months and even afterwards. Uh, I was doing as much as I could with work, and I still am, to be honest. Um, I think that's the main reason why I progressed pretty fast. So yeah, I'm definitely not unhappy with how far I've gotten so far, but it's just one of those things where the further in you get, the more you realize there, there is to learn. So like six months ago, there's I'm at a level now where six months ago... Uh, I know there's so much more stuff that I could learn, and I kind of felt that at six months ago, but there's a difference between kind of knowing that and actually experiencing that, actually seeing how much there is out there that you don't know. Um, so yeah, it will take a long time for me to get super good, I feel, but I mean, if Matt did in like three years, I feel like I could do something similar, and I've seen people... Um, you know, claim they're getting fluent with age out in like 18 months. I don't know if I'll be quite 18 months. Like, I doubt that six months from now I'll be at a level I can call fluent, but maybe like a year from now, maybe a year and a half from now, I can be pretty good at Japanese. Not like a sage level master of Japanese, but enough to where I feel pretty confident saying that, yeah, I'm pretty good at Japanese. Um, yeah, and honestly, I can like think about all this stuff and talk about it for a while, but at the end of the day, it's just keep on immersing, keep on making Anki cards, and uh, yeah, keep on getting better. So moving more specifically on to uh, what I'm going to do from now on, uh, just, just like in the last video where I talked about specifically, like, I'm going to do the monolingual transition, I think in the next six months, the main thing that I'm going to be doing, or at least the main new thing that I'm going to introduce is uh, I want to give Dogen's phonetics course a go. So this is the course that Dogen offers about Japanese phonetics and in particular pitch accent. So I've never really formally studied pitch accent. I've watched like a video or two that teaches you the basics where it's like there's four different uh, pitch accent patterns and the rest of it is pretty much just uh, looking up the uh, pitch of a word whenever I uh, learn it and just observing different things that happen when I uh, listen to pitch in uh, my audio immersion. And actually speaking of that, I realized I forgot to mention pitch here. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at pitch accent, at hearing pitch accent in particular. Um, when I, in the first six months, I was really almost clueless on pitch accent. Like, I didn't even watch those initial videos on pitch accent um, until, like, two or three months in. I was just kind of, like, knew that it existed. I didn't really even understand what the different pitch patterns were and how that even worked. But ever since then, I feel like I've been listening to it, listening for it more and more carefully. And I've gotten to the point where... I can hear a fair amount of stuff like really clearly uh, and to the point where if I hear something where I don't expect it to be that pitch, I actually like pause the video or whatever and I go look it up and see that I just remember this pitch wrong or are they using it in like a compound and that's why it's like that. So I've worked out a couple of rules, or at least I think they're rules based on how often I see them. So I've definitely been noticing pitch more and more. I'm not like clueless to it, but at the same time, there's like a couple of phenomenons that I still don't quite understand that I think it will be really helpful for me to actually learn the uh, proper rule uh, in Dogen's phonetics course. And all the same, I think I also need to do more pitch accent uh, hearing training. So I've, I've kind of like tried to do it whenever I watch stuff, but I think 
there might be more effective ways to get myself to hear pitch more clearly because some stuff it's like night and day the pitch sounds very different but for some other stuff it just sounds like yeah if i was listening really closely i probably would have noticed it or at least suspected it but if i'm just listening to something i probably wouldn't even notice if it was pronounced with the wrong pitch so i definitely want to change that because i think that's going to be a super important aspect of uh, getting really good at outputting Japanese in terms of sounding like a native, which is something I'm definitely very interested in. I've always been interested in sounding really good when speaking a foreign language. Um, even though my Russian was never that good, as I mentioned in the last video, I at least sounded like a native. And I think that was because, well, first of all, Russian is a stress accent language, not a pitch accent language. And I'm very used to stress accent languages from uh, having English be my native language. So the rest of it was just uh, imitating natives and I feel like that's the missing component for Japanese like I'll imitate natives but if I can't hear the pitch that the natives are saying like Matt mentioned in his recent video then I probably won't be able to do it very well so that's basically why I want to study pitch accent a bit more but yeah I went on a bit of a tangent there but yeah that's something I'm going to do in the next six months probably pretty soon actually maybe in the next month or two depends on I guess just whenever I feel like giving it a go. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, so output. So I mentioned output a little bit earlier. I don't think I'm going to output for quite a long while still. And the main reason for that is I don't really feel a need to output anytime soon. And I think it's just going to be better if I take the time, get a lot better at Japanese comprehension wise before I start output. Because I can feel like I already, I, I feel like I can already output a little bit. I can feel like I can construct, um, I feel like I can construct, sorry, some Japanese uh, thoughts, expressions, phrases without using like any English basis. I can just kind of think of how to phrase it and whether it sounds natural or not to me. And uh, obviously, I have a little bit of a doubt, ah, I keep tripping on my words. I have a little bit of doubt over that, but uh, I think it's going to take a lot more immersion before I get to the level where I can just have a conversation and be completely comfortable speaking. And there's just really no need because I live in the US and there's no Japanese being spoken around me and it's just not a priority for me. Maybe in a year uh, this will be something that I'll feel more ready to do and if I decide that I'm ready I'm probably going to get started with just you know online stuff obviously because there's nothing local for me here like Matt had where he was like at a Japanese uh, he's at a college where there's a lot of Japanese exchange students I'm probably going to do stuff like um, so I find sort of uh, pen pals or whatever through discord or I don't know I haven't really thought about it that much but I'll, I'll find something <sighs> okay and I guess I'll conclude this video because it's probably getting kind of long now Saying that I'm pretty much very satisfied right now with my pace in Japanese, not only in like my progress, but also just how I enjoy the routine. I just uh, enjoy having stuff open. It's basically basically just gotten to be a default for me that I'm always immersing in something. I hop around a lot, but I try to always keep it uh, quality Japanese immersion. And honestly, watching shows and reading interesting stuff is just gonna be fun no matter what even if I don't understand it 100% like I would in English and I actually find that a lot of stuff now I enjoy now that I know Japanese I enjoy it much more because Japanese is just one of those languages that is very um, hard to translate naturally into English and even though I watched anime and read manga a long time in English I got kind of used to the uh, clunky translations and the uh, the barrier of the language barrier there I can definitely say that it's so much more enjoyable uh, consuming something in its native language at least for Japanese so I think I'm gonna really enjoy getting to an even higher level where I can just immerse in stuff very very naturally almost like uh, in English <sighs> okay um, I think that's it for my notes and all the stuff that I wanted to say Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I do of course plan on making another one uh, six months from now, so that'll be the 18th month uh, progress video. 
Yeah, thank you for watching.